I'm Andrea Klein-Thomas, reporter with CBS New York here at the Fifth International Vatican Conference. We are joined now by Dr. Steve Clasco. Thank you so much for being here. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm really, really excited. Yeah, we are talking about a whole lot of things here at this conference. Tell me why it's so important to have people from different disciplines um, here at the same place, kind of talking about how to improve wellness for everyone. Well, first of all, we have we have two existential crises in, in, in this world, and one is climate change and the other is health care and equity. So and it can't be solved by one sector. Too many conferences just include one type of stakeholder and go out of their way to, to almost maintain the status quo. This conference is going to really look globally, like why we have so many health care inequities, why technology at this point has just made the wealthy healthier, how we put ethics at the beginning of the AI revolution, and then brings a variety of stakeholders, tech, providers, payers, ethicists, religious leaders, government, to look at non-incremental changes toward a more optimistic future. So this is really a one-of-a-kind conference, Andrea. Absolutely. I totally agree. And you talked about equity um, and you're in the Philadelphia area. What is the biggest challenge for the communities that Jefferson serves? Well, we, we have to recognize if you did a multiple choice test, what was your best chance of getting hospitalized or dying from COVID in Philadelphia, where I live? And you said, is it not wearing a mask? Is it social distancing? Is it your genetic code or is it your zip code? It would be your zip code. So we look at some of the revolutions around telehealth and online education that save people, Andrea, but 20% of, of folks in Philadelphia don't have broadband connections. So we need a whole different mindset as, as to how we look at, at, at broadband and connectivity so that we can enable some of these tech miracles. Yeah, let's talk about um, healthcare and higher education. How can we reimagine it so we have a new crop of doctors coming out um, that can really address these crises that you have laid out. So I'll just give you sort of one sort of example. We still accept doctors based on science, GPA, med cats, and organic chemistry grades. And somehow we're amazed that doctors are more empathetic, communicative, and creative, like that, uh, right? So, and when you think about what's so important for the future, I got to interview at this conference, David Feinberg, the vice president and head of Google Health. I'm gonna have a Google brain next to me that's gonna be better than any human at memorizing things. But what we need is to start to choose physicians and nurses based on self-awareness, empathy, communication skills, and cultural competence. You know, Andrea, 4% of matriculating medical students in 1978 were African-American males. 4% of medical students in 2018 were African-American males. When you start to choose people, though, not based on just memorizing skills, but self-awareness, empathy, and the kind of person you'd want for your doctor, we're able to quadruple diversity. That's that's pretty stunning right there. So let's talk about solutions. What needs to be done? Well, I think the first thing we have to do is start to look at how we can start to take technology and the human piece together, right? So when we talk about online meeting offline. So just I'll give you an example. I think that in this country, in the United States, what we need is actually almost like a 9-11 commission for healthcare. If you think about 9-11, we had Republicans blame Democrats, Democrats blame Republicans. At some point, we got together and said we failed to keep the country safe. We need to do the same thing with healthcare. We have to stop congratulating ourselves that we have all these great institutions, which we do in New York and Philadelphia throughout the country, and start to look at why it is that we have all these great institutions. But we literally have gotten no further than Dr. Martin Luther King said in 1966, that of all the forms of social injustice, healthcare inequities are the most shocking and inhumane. And we haven't gone much further. And, and Philadelphia, and I know you know Philadelphia, we have five academic medical centers. You know, two of, us, two of us are in the top 25 in the country. And we have a 21-year discrepancy of life expectancy by zip code. So we need to change the way we pay, pay folks. We have to change the way we use technology. And we have to get out what we call healthcare at any address. Jefferson, I want Jefferson to be defined by the people in Philadelphia feeling that they have Jefferson in their home, not what happens when they come to my hospital. Wow. Well, Dr. Clasco, that is pretty amazing work. We, <laughs> we can't wait to see what you all do and how you take the learnings from this moment, this, we're really in a moment right now, how you take that to move healthcare forward and, and really have better outcomes for all of your patients. So Dr. Clasco, thank you for joining us. Amen to that. Thank you, Andrea.